Hello, everyone. It is episode two of season two of Boy Blue and Bigby. And today we're talking about our favorite books with no pictures. We're talking about our favorite novels. Yeah, I was going to say, well, you can't say no pictures because one of the ones I got, it's like a childhood oh, okay. <laughs> book. Oh, okay. But because I loved it when I was reading it as a favorite non comic book slash manga, what we usually are discussing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's fair. And that's it. I'm I'm Boy Blue and this is Big B. Aloha, everybody. Coming live in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yeah, that'd be nice. I wish. It would be nice. So I believe I shall get. I started with the, yeah, get the get the party started, man. The childhood book of mine, which I have my references stacked right here. I don't know if you had all the books I own or the ones I picked. So my first one is the BFG by Oh, Roald by Roald Dahl. Dahl. yeah. This Look one. That. Uh, I read this in elementary school. And I uh, loved it a lot because it introduced me to my favorite phrase, am I right or my left? And I say that a lot more than I care to admit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a really great book. It's for all ages. It's about a the BFG, a big friendly giant who uh, gives kids good dreams. And there are these evil, his brothers, other giants who are mean and nasty and eat people. So pretty much a BFG and this little girl, I forget her name, Sophie, which is on the back, uh, team up together to bring some kind of peace to London as the bad giants are running hmm. amok. So two so thumbs up for me. I've never I've never read that and uh What? Yeah, I never read it and I, I wasn't even like aware of it until they made that movie, which I never saw. But when I when I first saw it, because I was basically an adult. Well actually, yeah, that movie came out only a few years ago, right? So I wasn't yeah, I, was, I was I was an adult. Um I saw BFG and I'll edit it, but I thought it was like big effing giant. Like just a, <laughs> just a big effing giant. That, like that's what I thought it was. And then I was like, wait, this is a kid mo- kid's movie. It can't be big effing giant. And uh, it's big friendly giant. I learned, but I I kind of want to write my own spinoff. A big effing giant. A big effing giant. Well, he has to be big, like he's really, really, big. really, really because big. That's he, all the story's about. He's just really big. Yeah, this, but this, the BFG is literally the smallest of the giants. Like everybody else is like bigger than him. He's just like. So this is the sequel. Small. Maybe I'll call it Notorious yeah. BFG. Notorious <laughs> BFG. Uh, there you go. Cool. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. You could go yeah. anywhere. Like, I knew it wasn't, that's not what it was. But at the yeah. same time, I saw a poster and I was like, that's got to be what it yeah, is. Yeah, this is the poster. Yeah. It's on the cover of the book. It's a big giant. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that sounds like a, it sounds like a good one. It's a good pick. Yeah. I didn't think about picking childhood favorites i feel like i just picked like sad stuff no well, naturally i just naturally assumed you picked sad stuff yeah. <laughs> like i just picked it because i was like oh i loved that reading as a kid and i after i saw that it was a uh, on the shelf again i think i got it at target i instantly bought it without a without a second hesitation I'm like oh nice. BFG. i grabbed it bought it and then it's been sitting on my shelf in pristine condition all this time. You you physically added to cart. Yeah, physically. Physically, physically added to cart. Yeah. It's good. It's yeah. good. Well, I'll go next. I'm trying to decide which one I want to start with. I'll start with this one. This is Lush Life by Richard Price. I read this last year. Actually, most of this stuff I read last year because I'm only really just now becoming a literate mm-hmm. member of society. <laughs> But uh, Richard Price, yeah, not postmodern, not postmodern. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a, for those of you don't, who don't know, Richard Price um, is a pretty fairly known author, but he's also known for writing on the show The Wire. So if you like The Wire, I highly, highly recommend you read some Richard Price. 
but this one is about a a young man gets uh gunned down in new york city um while he is just walking down the street he's like being mugged and he's like no i'm not gonna give you my wallet and before you know it, he's killed and one of the there's someone with him like an acquaintance like you saw the whole thing and he like ran and dipped and then the police uh immediately think that guy's a, sus a suspect obviously you know he didn't do it because he was just there and uh i don't know it's a very realistic to me as far as i know a very realistic depiction of an investigation like it's it's kind of a dull book to be quite honest like there's no like revelation where they're like we solved the mystery it kind of just like i don't want to spoil the ending but it's kind of just like shrug you know it's it's one of those where it left me empty and sad. And if you know me, if a book leaves me empty and sad, it's getting a thumbs up. So, <laughs> but is that the one you were telling me about last year with the cop? With like, oh, I know it was this guy, but it wasn't that guy. It was someone else. So like it's funny. Him. It's funny you say that. So that's Clockers, which is mm -hmm. also by Richard Price. Oh, okay. So sim right. similar theme. Except this one, you get the perspective like of the accused. So like the guy who ran away and saw everything, yeah. Um, and the cops are like, "We, you're a big suspect." Like, it's like from a lot of it's from his perspective. Mm -hmm. And then another part is from like uh, the father of the victim, and he's like grieving. So that's all really sad because he's not taking it well. Um, Anyways, so if you want a good uplift, I just realized like <laughs> all the books I have people. are like really not uplifting whatsoever. Um, but yeah, Lush Life, highly recommend it. I can decide yeah if I like this more or less than Clockers, um, but I have this one physically, so I thought I'd show it off. And Clockers, I read I think digitally from the library. Richard Price is the man, though. It's a man with a plan. If you haven't watched The Wire, have you watched The Wire? I watched, like, I want to say the first couple of episodes. Oh, push, yeah, push that's, through, that's, man. Yeah, that's Good the show. one with uh, Dominic okay. West, right? Yeah, and Idris okay. Elba. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. I Good should show. get back into that show. Good show. All right, what's your, your next uh, <laughs> pick here? And again, a little blast from the past. I read this one lots of times, and I thought it's because it was uh, really, really hilarious. It's a, a love story kind of thing, but it's a comedy called 24 Girls in Seven Days, a novel by Alex Bradley. That sounds amazing already. It, I've never heard of this. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really funny because it's about a guy named Jack Grammer who trying to find a date to prom so his friend his best friends put an ad on like in the school newspaper say hey we're gonna try to fit 24 girls in basically seven days before prom to see who would go who would he take the prom and it's like a whole bunch of uh crazy uh, teenage hijinks happen like uh, all these girls just want his attention because you know the word is out that he'll take them to prom and he there's like four parts and the different each girl's like something that he doesn't like about him and it's been a while since i read it but i just know that it was good enough for me to buy it <laughs> and i know I, it's pretty worn out so i know i read this like several times that's always a good yeah. good uh judgment you know you can tell yeah. so yeah, it's a really good book. It's funny. Like I laughed quite a bit reading it. Nice, nice. And uh, yeah, it's a really good book, and I uh, recommend it. Again, nice. I read this in like junior high or high school, so it's another blast from the past. Blast from the past. Yep. <laughs> um, I'm going to pull an audible because I just remembered another book. This is the cartel. By Don Winslow. Um, in terms of most depressing books I've ever read, this might be the most depressing book I've read. So bear that in mind. 
Uh, this is also the second book in a series. The first one is The Power of the Dog. I recommend you start with that one. Funnily enough, I started with this one because I didn't know it was the second book. So you could if you want to. But yeah. this one is about cartels in Mexico. It is a fiction book, but a lot of the events that happen are real events. Like if you look them up, you're like, oh, shoot, that was a real thing. It's just he inserts his fictional characters into the real story. Or, I'm sorry, the real uh, yeah. event. And uh, so he also uses a lot of like he'll change the name of people. So like famous or infamous uh, drug cartel leaders, you know who they're he's talking about in real life. But he changes the name. Um, but this is a horrifying book. And it, I mean, if you want to know some of what is happening um, in Mexico from drug cartels, I would read this. Also then go like fact check because obviously it does take some liberties, but a lot of it is very factual and that's probably why it's the most depressing book I've read because at first, yeah, at first I was like, oh, it's all made up. And then I was like, wait a second. A lot of this is real. And like th for this one, um, it's dedicated to all uh, the innocent victims in Mexico. Yeah, so you can, you can, this list here, this two page list is all uh, reporters in Mexico who have been killed. So, um, and that's like a good deal of this book is like one of the main characters is a reporter um, and like basically their newspaper, the newspaper they work for tells them like, don't print that because you'll die, that sort of thing. And uh, he I like- Print it? Well, he's, he, I mean, they're not gonna print it. The newspaper won't print oh. it. Um, so he like sets up a blog and it's, it's I, I mean, I won't say what happens to them, I'm I'm pretty but sure nothing good. Nothing happens good to happens to them. I mean, it's uh, the Mexican drug cartel. They're known yeah. to be it's, sadistic it's, people. It's it's not good when, like I said, the it's dedicated to all these victims who are reporters, and then one of your characters a reporter. Probably not. Uh, yeah, good, but... good, good thing there. So, anyways, I thought of that, and then I was like, I need to mention it because it's it is well worth your time folks but once again if you don't want to read sad stuff all the power to you i'll read a book and then i'm like wow i'm really sad why did i read that? <laughs> and I'm i feel like, like but that's then... just you exclusively though like you'll yeah. you'll find you'll find a like you'll do a google uh, google search about hey what is the most sad book <laughs> right now and then it'll oh. pop up 2020 the saddest book <laughs> anyway, such and such and you're just like Add to cart, add to library books. It's, I mean, it's, it. it's funny you say that. There's actually a, a book that came out, I think <laughs> last week, called American Dirt. And it's also oh. about, uh, the, about cartels. I'm like, yeah. well, I got to read that. So I heard, I feel like it was Oprah's pick. I, yeah, I, yeah I that's right. Oprah's pick for like, I'm not a fan of hers. But I read somewhere that Selma Hayek, like, put it on her Instagram page and then people were like upset about it because of that book. I, I don't know. It's like a crazy drama. Yeah. I, I think I've seen some of the drama and I don't know if I'm ready to unpack that. You should. <laughs> on our show. I feel like you're going you're gonna, to like get tears. Cause I think that one has to do with the, uh, if I read what they posted, like about a, woman trying to cross into America? Yeah. Something like I, that? I think, uh, I think if, I, if I've read correctly, it, it features... So not to go back to Don Winslow, but in Don mm -hmm. Winslow's third book, um, there's a character trying to cross the border, and there's a train, a real train that runs through mm -hmm. Mexico that um, people will ride on tops of the train and you can yeah. you can look up pictures of this and like uh because it gets them close to the border and they'll just like mm -hmm. run and like have to jump onto it um so anyways i think that features prominently in american dirt mm -hmm. i think that's how she tries to to get over the border if i read correctly that's actually how a bunch of them actually do it 
Yeah. They jump on the train and then. Also, American Dirt, I saw was Don Winslow approved. Like on the front of the book, <laughs> it's like a quote from him. And I was like, Are you serious? He quoted? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh. just basically like this book's awesome, you know, something like that. You should read it. It's yeah. okay. I'm like, not the author. I'm some other dog. Ones. He's speaking right to me. <laughs> oh, so since we're keeping uh, with my heritage, Mexico, my third pick was something that I loved a lot Zorro by Isabel Allende. And this book is basically the origin story of Mexico's American, I guess, Americanized hero, Zorro, of how he became the legendary fighter of truth and justice and all that in Mexico. Hmm. It starts off with his parents meeting. His mother was like a Native American, I guess Native Mexican, a warrior chief. Mm -hmm. chieftain who fell in love with the, you know his uh his father who was a ranch owner and they gave birth to Diego, sorry I can't talk right now Diego de la Vega who eventually becomes the legendary Zorro and it goes between uh it gives you a lot of back history of California while you're reading it in the beginning that explains the uh how would they say it? The hierarchy, or not the hierarchy? The how the rich people own their little ranches and have their own little, uh, like I guess, slaves. I guess is what they, they they're not really slaves. The workers, ranch hands. I guess that's what they call them. Mm. And so, yeah, it it's really cool because it you know takes. Little Diego de la Vega from California to Spain, where Spain he learns how to fight with a sword and fencing, art, archery, and all that fancy cool stuff. And then comes back to California where he realizes that pretty much like Batman, he could have like two sides. Where one, he's like, I could pretend to be this dandy, all dressed in finery to avoid suspicion, but at night I am the terror of the night, the fox, which is what Zorro mm -hmm. translates to as the fox because yeah. he's cunning, smart, and hides off when he fights. And I thought, like, that is really cool. So that's literally my second favorite book of all time. So I'm, I'm really naive. Is that, like, the original Zorro story? Like, is that the creation no. of the character? Oh, okay. It's, like, it's, an adaptation. Yeah. I don't... I don't even know where, like, where that was. It a book originally, or was it, it like was, a film? It was a movie, okay. I believe, so first. Yeah, and then right. it was a. Then later on, it became a comic strip, which I have, the original I think comic strips, in a graphic novel form. Oh, that's cool. And then uh, Isabel Allende wrote her story about, you know, expanding his background and all that stuff. And then that got translated into, uh, not translated, uh, Jeff Wagner, the comic book writer. Wagner, I forget his first name. He developed it into a, her book into a comic book or a graphic novel, which is like, I think it has three volumes huh. in it. Yeah. 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 So I recommend it. I mean, whether you read the, uh, uh, whether you read the book or the graphic novels or go back and find the uh, original comic strips, mm -hmm. it's really cool. Then again, I'm, I'm very impartial because he's Mexican and <laughs> and I'm you know proud of my my heritage. There you go. I need to find a Scottish hero. Oh, you do? I do. Yeah, what's his name? Braveheart. <laughs> Is he? Yeah, I guess that yeah. would be it. Yeah. yeah, he's Scottish. Yeah, I mean, the actual guy. Uh, What's his name? I can't even remember his name. Anyways, <laughs> I'll go with my next one. So I'd be remiss if I not, did not mention Peace and Turmoil. <laughs> you see, I was going to add that to my list, but I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure he's going to do it. So 
You know, it's funny. I thought I was like, I wonder if it will be on a uh, <laughs> list. But uh, so this this was written by my wife. And her name is on the spine, Elliot Brooks. And it's a it's a big fat fantasy novel. It's like 700 some pages. And there's a sequel coming pretty soon. But I am really bad at summing up fantasy books because I'm like, there's so much going on. But uh, I don't know. How would you describe it? They're looking. There's these artifacts that have mystical yeah. properties to them. And they each each country controls an artifact. And there is a... Bl uh, a budding, a budding romance between uh, two artifact guardians, and that's forbidden because then no they'd have two too place much power. Can't have, yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's another plot with uh, a prince who has to be uh, disguised. He's also an assassin, um, and he wants to get one of the. He wants to get the dagger. Because the dagger gives immortality, um, and his mother is dying, which would throw his kingdom into chaos. And that's just scratching the surface. And I, like I said, it's it's a it's a big boy, and she's writing another one, and probably another couple after that. So, so how out. many is she planning on? I want to say. Last time I spoke with her, I think. Five? Five? Four or five? Yeah. So the one she's working on now, I've actually read the first part, um, like part one you know, mm -hmm. in, in the book. And it's like, I don't remember how many words, but it's a lot of words. Like it's like her part one of her second book, I think is like a third of this book. And I was really? Like, oh, wow. I was like, um, you might need, you might be more than five books here. I don't know. I'm, unless you want to be pumping out like thousand page books here. I don't I mean I mean honestly she's writing faster than George R. R. Martin. <laughs> I think like what everybody's waiting on what that last the last Game of Thrones book? But, well it's not even the last. I know but like the I guess the most recent I don't know how you would call it because there's I only know there of there being five books at, there's five books right now. College? Yeah. Yeah. And book six is taking too long it's yeah when, when did book five come out it had i mean i think i was in like high school so like uh, last year yeah yeah last year <laughs> uh, uh let's see i'm trying to look it up do 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 oh i would put him dance with dragons of course it brings up the tv episode <laughs> i want the book Game of Thrones show As people. Boy, Blue is uh, searching that. I'm going to give you guys my uh, interpretive dance from. I, ha I have uh, a date not already. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Thank God. July 12th, 2011. So I just. Oh, wow. High school. Yeah, nine. dude. It's been like almost it's eight nine, years. Nine years. Nine years. Nine yeah. years. Jeez. It's a while. Yeah. And L over here is like writing, writing it like. There ain't no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when she gets on like a a spree, it's like that's like what she does. Like so she did that pretty recently where she was like mm. pumping it out and then she's like, read part one. I was like, Good lord, like it's a lot. It was like two hundred twenty computer pages, and I was like That's a lot. Yeah. So uh, about her thought process, I, I'm just curious about this like does she go back and read read what she wrote to keep the ideas flowing or does she have like her own whole brainstorm set up in her computer i'll have to i'll have to ask her i mean she has a lot of i know she has like a lot she had like she was using a computer program with like notes like mm -hmm. I, I forget what it's called but like basically it has like little note card like yeah. things so she could like oh. type in notes and stuff um, she's read her first book though a few times. I mean, I feel like she she has a good grasp of like everything, where, how it ended, yeah. and where 
And she, I mean, she is like, she knows where it's going. She has like scenes written out from like book three, just to like kind of mm-hmm. get it done. Um, but I feel like it's like connecting all those. Yeah, stories. all the dots yeah. and whatnot. I hope. I don't, I like, I tell her from time to time, like, I have no idea how you do that. Like, like after I finished part one of book two, I was like, like on no, on no planet could I have like, written like 200 pages of anything <laughs> i know i'm still waiting for at least page 10 of your yeah. novel which you <laughs> got like, what, the novel. <laughs> one page yeah i think i wrote like what like a paragraph or two yeah like, actually to be fair it was like two paragraphs oh yeah there you go yeah, yeah. see i'm on the george R. R. martin track you know yeah, you should be on that track only you like should be on else track <laughs> and pumping the ideas out i should i should uh, so, uh, I have a few honorable mentions because I would, you know, just pull them for myself if I could find them. But one of them I physically can't because I remember lending it to a coworker of mine a long time ago, and I've not gotten that book back. Which is one of my all time favorite is Dracula. Oh, love that gothic uh, love story classic. tale. Yeah, yeah, read that in junior high for uh what is it alternative reading that program where we had to read for like 30 minutes mm-hmm. yeah english class so i picked that one because it was on the bookshelf and i was like oh this looks cool and i read it and i'm like oh my god i love this love this book then when i found out it was a movie i was like i love this movie <laughs> so, uh, there's that, a is there a netflix show yeah. you know? have you watched yeah, it yet not yet Okay. I'm Is like, even, yeah, I just I've heard about it. I think. Yeah, it's uh, it's on Netflix, but I'm just like, I don't know why I haven't watched it yet. I mean, it's from BBC, so it should be good because it's you, know, you get all the fancy British accents. But uh, yeah, I love Dracula and the sequel that his grandkids made. Grandkids. I did not know about that. Yeah, there's a, a sequel. I know I have that one on the shelf somewhere. It's uh, pretty much... Not it's, Dracula. No, not the sun. It's literally... Uh, the quick synopsis is Jonathan and Mina have a kid who becomes an actor who... Son of Dracula. Not the son of Dracula. <laughs> but uh, uh, he finds out that, that uh, Bram Stoker wrote a book called Dracula based on his parents' lives. And it's like a whole wompy in timey wimey fluctuation kind of thing where it's like he writes based on true events that people think it's like a story. But it happened in their real world, but it takes place like a little like the 1900s, the beginning around there. Mm-hmm. And Dracula is this famous actor who's in disguise because some other vampire lady is trying to kill him to take the grand spot. Huh. So yeah, it's really uh, it's really it interesting. It's modern to me. It sounds Yeah, yeah very <laughs> postmodern. Uh, you'll love it. It's yeah, very yeah, depressing. Yeah. Oh good. good. People would like vampires kill everybody. Good, good, good. Yeah. But what? oh go ahead. Oh uh, go ahead. You first sir, you got a question? Oh no, Answer. no, no. no. So my favorite is by my favorite actor who is star of the Evil Dead trilogy and Ash versus the Evil Dead and he's in Burn Notice. The one, the only, Bruce Campbell and his book called Make Love, Asterisk, The Bruce Campbell Way. (laughs) And this is literally one of the funniest books I've ever read. It's uh, it it's a fictional book. Nothing in this story happened for real. Nice. But okay. he pretty much writes the story, playing it out as like it actually happened, where he gets the part in a movie called Make Love as the chauffeur to this fancy hotel where it's the film also stars uh, Renee Zellweger and um, <laughs> what's his name? Oh, I'm drawing a blank. He's another famous like '90s actor, uh, Richard Gere. Nice. And they're supposed to be buddy buddies. And so in this whole crazy book, he's trying to uh, 
teach Richard Gere how to be a good actor while B rated actor where they do his own stunts. And so he's like trying to be like goes off and does little uh little thing to try to get better at his acting or like try to get in the mindset of a of a chauffeur and whatnot. And it's really funny, it's really cool, it's really unique and it's Bruce Campbell, so that's you know, my I'm, number one. I'm glad that uh that you're here because mine is like this is a depressing book. This is a depressing <laughs> book. And then they're like, these are funny books. It's a good, it's good yeah. Book. Yeah, yeah. You got to have one with the other. You can't have one without the other. Exactly, exactly. Is that all of your honorable mentions? Uh, well, there's also another one that really well, it's kind of up your alley. Uh, okay. Really depressing to me. It's the Five People You Meet in Heaven by uh, oh. I forget the author's name. Uh, he's write a lot of these little kind of books. Tuesday with Maury, One More Day, then Five More People You Meet in Heaven. This one is about a uh, a old... Um, Mitch Album. Yes. Thank you. Mitch Album. Had to, had to let the people Look know. it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. His, this is like literally the first book, and I'll say this to anybody and everybody, the first book to ever literally, literally made me cry. So that's why I'm saying like this book is pretty depressing. And Sounds like something I should read. It is something you should read. Like if I had tears, man, I think you'll be like bawling. I'll have like, a good cry. Yeah, good. like a really good cry. Uh, pretty much, it's the story of a um, old uh, Ferris wheel worker who dies in a Ferris wheel accident, and he like he saves a little girl. So when he passes on, he goes and meets five different people in heaven who all like somehow, if I remember, they're all connected to him. One way or another, and mm -hmm. then, like they've had some impact on his life, or yeah. he impacted them, or something. Yeah, like that. and he goes through all of them, and I think number four or five was the one that made me like ball my eyes out, and uh, and and in the end, he decides whether he wants to move on or he wants to be like the next person who leads oh, someone okay. on. Okay, so it's a really great book. I recommend it to everybody. I recently, recently, fairly recent, bought that one for my uh, my beauty. So I believe she read it. I hope she read it. And it's a really great book. I recommend it to everybody. Well, while we're on the subject of death and great books. <laughs> okay. I read this only a couple of weeks ago. Lincoln oh. <laughs> and the Pardo. This one didn't quite make me cry, but real close, real close. So real this, close. this is about, uh, it's such a weird premise, but I'll, I'll do my best. So Willie Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's son, uh, died. I mean, like in real life, like he died when he was like 10 years old. So this book is uh, Willie Lincoln Dies. And his ghost uh, is in a graveyard, like where they bury him. And he meets these other ghosts. And the ghosts don't quite realize they're dead. They just think they're sick. And like, they'll get better. Um, like they're all in denial. Hmm. And they begin to like, they have kind of like in Christmas Carol, like um, Marley, like he has chains on him. Yeah. Because it like shows how he was in real life. Kind of similar to this, like, um, the ghosts, like physically, they take on different shapes of like how they lived, and uh, but a lot of it is like like Abraham Lincoln comes back to the to the gravesite um, a few times, like after Willie dies, and uh, the ghosts are like like flabbergasted about that, like because like their family would come like occasionally but he like comes like all the time and anyways they like they like gravitate towards willie and it's just a beautiful book i can't really describe it but it's like almost all dialogue um like i'll show you it looks super weird so you'll see like there's words oh okay and, and it says like who said it um so it's so like a he, script yeah so it kind of reads like a script except so like the 
the action at the beginning, like Willie dying, that's all told through like historical do documents. Some of them are real. Um, some of them are made up. So like, it'll be like, uh, so when Willie died um, or shortly before the Lincolns were holding a party for like dignitaries and stuff. Hmm. So there's like letters or journal entries or historical documents, like talking about how like they could tell the Lincolns were worried about something, but they weren't hmm. sure what. And like Abraham kept leaving the room and blah, blah, blah. So you like slowly get like, Oh shoot, his son's dying. And then you get like, documents once again some real some not about like the funeral blah blah and then you get into um where he's a ghost so you kind of have to get prepped for like him dying and then him being a ghost but once you like get past that because it's a weird book like visually to like look at but once you kind of like get into it you're like i it's it i don't know i don't know if it's i'm not ready to say it's my favorite book of all time but it's 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 up there. It's mm -hmm. getting pretty close. So plus you've been reading a lot of postmodern books, so that, yeah. that I can get bumped down. I you know, this I'm not sure if this is postmodern. It might be. I mean, just like kind of like how it's set up. Like mm -hmm. it's not conventional, you know, in, in terms of like how it looks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's making it or the author was trying to write it so that if a movie studio tries to make it into a film, like, oh hey. It's all set. It's right there, yeah, buddy. It's actually, interesting you say that. So, a couple things. Um, the audiobook, I haven't listened to it, but the audiobook has a huge cast and really talented people attached to it. Like a, Nick Offerman hmm. um, is one of the voices. But because he did a voice for the audiobook, he actually uh, bought the film rights. So, he, Nick, he really? Offerman, Nick Offerman and his wife are actually both um, scripting it right now. So, Oh, that shouldn't be hard. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's it's yeah. Hard. yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty, pretty cool. Did you have any more? Uh, well, there's a bunch of Star Wars books, but I could like the Thrawn trilogy really caught my attention. Uh, set it's set after the uh, Return of the Jedi, which I really wish they brought Thrawn into a. The live action as opposed to rebels the cartoon show mm. or animated show because he's a villain who like you haven't seen in the star wars live action films uh he, he doesn't use the force he just uses like his own he's he's a tactician he uses his own uh brain power like like he'll study the art from whatever species he's hunting and he'll get their like strategy just by looking at the art that sounds awesome it it is man like he's literally my favorite villain that's not a sith lord or a. did you say it's a, a trilogy yeah okay yeah. i think my brother read those and told me they're really good they they really are because against the jedi you think like oh it has to be someone with equal or greater power to take yeah. on luke skywalker and his friends like no this guy uses like his uh strategic brilliance on taking everybody out like he could like pinpoint his uh opponent's next move without them realizing it beforehand mm -hmm. and i was like when i was reading i'm like how are they gonna beat this guy this guy like knows everything they're gonna do but sure enough obviously at the end the good guys gotta win or else i mean Bad guy doesn't win in this one. Yeah, I, no. I really wish they did, but yeah, dang. Yeah, there's that one, and then uh, there is obviously Jurassic Park. Oh yeah, Michael Crichton. Yeah, yeah. Jurassic Park: The Last Word. I got the uh, hardcover uh, Barnes and Noble edition. I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's look. awesome. Those are cool. Yeah. They really are. Like, yeah, it looks really nice on the shelf, but I just need to buy more books that are like that style. I feel like those books are so much more disturbing than the movies. They actually genuinely are. Like like the, because isn't it like the prologue like the guy's on vacation on the beach and yeah. there's like that little dinosaur and it like yeah. attacks him and like tears out his intestines or something. Yeah, pretty much the beginning of the second film. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The little girl that gets bit. Yeah, 
mm-hmm. the beginning of the second film is pretty much the beginning of Jurassic Park, yeah. the, the book. So, yeah, that's like one of my favorite ones I, I like to read. Um, Mistborn. Oh, good. Call. Is a, a great one. Like, I kid you not, when I started reading, I'm like, oh, hey, dude, I'm not into fantasies a whole lot. And then I read it. And as I recall telling you, you and L, the two O S H I T moments <laughs> happen like consecutively in there. I'm like, holy crap, is it going to happen? Oh my God, he did it. And then, like, what just happened? And my brain just like, so did you did you read the whole trilogy or just the first one? I don't remember. Uh, just the first one completely. Oh, okay. In the middle of the second one. Okay. I feel to me personally, and and Elliot would disagree. Um, I think the second one's the weakest. I think the second one's actually her favorite, maybe. Well, actually, no, she likes the third one too. The third one's really solid. That's all I'm so say. it goes. Uh I want to do the same. Thing you told me about uh, fables, the first one, second one, third one. Is that how it goes? Yeah, it's that for me, and that's how it goes. Yeah. Okay, I was just like, yeah, that's that's honestly how I'm gonna go with books when you recommend. Like, oh yeah, he says it's like this one <laughs> down, and then it shoots back up. Good old Man. born. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I I haven't read much after. A, Mistborn, I believe, because I'm still sort of reading Stephen King's It. That's my goal is to finish yeah. that. Because I that's a big boy. That's a really big is. boy. That's like at least one full of uh peace and turmoil and a half. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, the only other one I have, like right next to me, is this is the whole L.A. Quartet, but I'm talking specifically, where's my finger? L.A. Confidential. Oh, okay. So L.A. Confidential like, by James that's a big Elway. boy. Oh, yeah, that's four books. So, yeah, that's that's four oh. books together. But L.A. Confidential I is a masterpiece. Hmm. I couldn't tell you what it's about because the plot is so convoluted. But it, so I'm just going to talk about James Elroy for a second. So James Elroy, um, author Black Dahlia. So that's the first in the L.A. Quartet. Um, good, good book. Uh, the Big Nowhere, second one. Good book. Actually, very good book. I I liked it quite a bit. L.A. Confidential. So this is the story behind L.A. Confidential and kind of like his writing sense. So he wrote L.A. Confidential and it was giant. Um, and his editor was like, we need to like trim this down, take some stuff out. And supposedly... He was like, everything in there is as it should be. So he just started taking out words. <laughs> so this, his style developed into this fascinating, like I'll try to like, we're trying to find like a section. It's like bullet points almost. Mm-hmm. And at first, uh, it does, like you're like, what is he saying? But like, so it's like he drove there woozy, keyed up. He started to feel the closeout. Bad debts settled bad at clean slate. It's like this very like. Sparse, really? So it's like. like it's like a super, literal noir. Everything. In every, it. Yeah. Every, so the dialogue, he still like keeps dialogue between mm. characters normal. But like yeah. everything else is like super noir, like out of necessity. And so, it's amazing. <laughs> and so it's. it's and, oh, go ahead. And, anyways, like I say, everything afterward, as far as I know, is written like that. Um, like the next book, White Jazz, is written like that, and then his other books that he's written, mm-hmm. he keeps like that sparse style. And I don't know what it is. Like, it's almost hard for me to read his previous books now because I'm like, this is amazing, and then I'm like, oh, no, you got to thank the editor for that. Yeah, yeah, I, right? I mean, it's amazing. Like, it sounds and, brilliant, dude. Read L.A. Confidential. I mean, like. So the thing with the LA Quartet is they're recurring characters, mm-hmm. like recurring side characters. Um, so I, I almost think you should read Black Dahlia and Big Nowhere first, because there is a key character in LA Confidential who like, if you know about him, it's better. But mm-hmm. man, I'm sure many people have just read LA Confidential because it's, it's the most famous one. They made a movie yeah. about it. But 
there, there's a key character where like if you don't know about him then you don't know what's up i guess is what i'm yeah. saying but it is a, such a good book it's amazing and you should read it you know it's funny when you said when you were were reading that ex excerpt of how he was his style it reminded me of sin city how yeah exactly like the film and the graphic novel are just like short quick uh things like that yeah i'll try to find like uh can't read that <laughs> yes you can foul language in here um let's see just keep a pg like we do with at double hockey sticks boy <laughs> So, like, I don't even remember what he's talking about at this point, but it says, Jack kicked him prone, yanked the spike from his arm, a frisk, no resistance. Claude was up on cloud 10. Bingo. Like, that's amazing. All of that is amazing. So, uh, LA Confidential is amazing. I, I think it's one of those books I'll probably read every year. I, I don't know if I would read the first two every year, but, man, LA Confidential is, like, it's a masterpiece a masterpiece and i know i said this might be my favorite book but now mind. looking back on it yeah la, LA confident is probably my favorite it's, i think it's my favorite book it's 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 so good i don't even care i don't even care if you don't like it if you don't like you know it what's funny <laughs> the podcast over You're like no <laughs> must like um Lord yeah. of the Rings is one we forgot to mention. I feel like Lord, Lord of the Rings is a good... And I, I need to reread it because I read it um, in high school, I think, is when I read all of them, mm. like, through. Yeah. See, I, I was the same. <laughs> like, senior year, I think I read all three. So it's actually, no, I must have... Maybe I was younger because I read it before... I remember reading the Return of the King book before the movie came out. Um, because I remember reading the book and be like, what the heck does ghosts like, oh, yeah. like, I was like, like, is he, is like is everyone really getting an army of ghosts right now. Is that what's happening? And then like, I was like, well, I'll be darned. There's an army of ghosts. And then I was like, are they going to have that in the movie? And look at that. They had it in the movie. <laughs> you know, like, what do I know? That you see out of all the bizarre things that happen in the books and in the film, the ghost is it's so out of it was through yeah it threw me up like so his great great ancestor sword can fight against these ghosts yeah. now and it just like that's one of the things that kind of baffles me even to this day when i'm like re-watching yeah. re watching that movie i'm like okay like well, the first thing arrow I, I just feel like the i don't know man I, i'm not by any means a tolkien uh, expert, so I'm sure people will correct me, but I feel like it was so out of nowhere for like the lore, like because mm -hmm. I, you know, you read the first two books and you're like, okay, elves, dwarves, dragons, men, dragon, orcs, recovered, giant spiders, spiders. And then it's like, go find this army of ghosts, Aragorn. I'm like, what? Yeah. They owe your great great yeah. ancestors a debt. And they're like, oh, okay, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> Why not? And it's just like I was waiting for vampires and werewolves at one point because <laughs> right? if they threw ghosts, then like they're bound to be in there somewhere. Yeah. Well, that's that's it for me. I yeah I get L.A. Confidential in there, and now I just want to read L.A. Confidential. Like, <laughs> like, well, it's so if, good. If it makes you feel any better, I kind of want to reread all these books right here. Yeah, there you go. Just. Yeah. Just out of principle alone. Especially so, viewers, let us know your favorite books um, with little to no pictures in them. And we'll, you know, if we've heard of them or read them, we'll respond. We'll respond to you if we haven't heard of them. Yeah. But I'll probably, I haven't heard of that. I'll look into it. That's what I mean. Saying. It's only fair. Like, there's like a infinite number of books out there that both of us have not read like <laughs> Mistborn, all that i probably would never have heard of it until you know you and the l recommended it to me so it is funny like growing up and i, I think this is like a product of lord of the rings those movies coming out mm -hmm. in my formative years you know i really was in the fantasy like i read lord of the rings i read mm -hmm. wheel of time um some brandon sanderson 
um, you know, Mistborn and all that. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, R.A. Salvatore, people are out there familiar with that. Anyways, I read a lot of fantasy. And that's like all I read. And then I went to college and didn't read anything. And then after that, I was like, oh, and actually, and, and I, I read comics too. And mm-hmm. then I was like, I want to read a bunch of comics. And then I was like, books, I don't have time for books. I'm going to read comics and manga for the rest of my life. And then I read The Cartel, and I was like, that was amazing. And I read that while on vacation in Iceland, <laughs> reading a really depressing book in a beautiful country. But anyways, Which, when we get back, it like, looks a little depressing. I feel like only in the last like year, I'm like, like I've read like only fantasy books. So now I'm at like, I'm reading like other things. I'm like, there's so much. <laughs> like, I'm just like baffled by it. Anyways, that was like a really unnecessary tangent, but no, that that's all right, man. I mean, I was kind of the same. Like in high school, I didn't read the only fantasy book I ever read was The Lord of the Rings, and then uh, Dracula, and like every now and again, like an autobiography from either a wrestler, football player, or or just something random that I was trying to pick up on. And then later on in life, I did what you did. Like, I just strictly read comic books, manga, uh, whatever random books p- piqued my interest at the time. Mm. And then now I'm just like, oh, what can I read next? I mean, there's a bunch of comic books where I should just, like, read the books I bought that I have on my shelf. Yeah. And just, right. like, hey, it's a balance. It's got to be it a balancing act. act. Yeah, I, I think, like, I don't know. I mean... I think it started with like, I don't know, it's just like, it's, it's like, what am I trying to say? I just feel like there's not enough good television. And <laughs> books are like really good television. <laughs> like, I mean, that's true. I mean, like, it's television me, getting better. Though. Yeah. Speaking of that, Bojack Horseman. Final season. Final season coming up. Which might be our next episode? No, I think it might be if we uh, both. Uh... Yeah. Well, actually, we'd have to watch it really quick, huh? Yeah. I mean, Anyways, we could essentially we just like call in sick. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I'm not feeling good. I got that coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, like, oh, I got better funny magically, that. guys. Funny yeah. Sad. Funny yeah. Sad. So uh, the next episode could be Bill Jack Horseman or. It could be something even better. And I'm talking about the fact that it's uh, Bone. We both yes. bought Bone yeah, on a cover, really great full deal. Color, yeah, full color edition. So, so that one will be coming. Once we get them, hmm. we're going we're gonna to unbox them in front of you and tears yeah. will fall from my eyes his as eyes. I look up his glory. Yeah. My, my copy is so beat up. My paperback all in one copy and like i believe it i borrowed it and it's just like it's like it like just like blah. yeah you see that's one of my my worries is that you know sometimes the hard covers just like the spine won't stay yeah. with so many pages yeah, yeah you know, that's a good point. That's a good point. we'll have to we'll examine the the spine in the yeah, binding. I mean, although i'm not an expert on that by yes. any means but yes you are Look, look at all those we'll spines we'll behind you. Relax the spine. Relax the spine. All right. Well, thank you for watching. And uh, it's been a pleasure discussing novels with you today. I yeah. I have to say, I've, I've never read Dracula. So maybe I should I should read Dracula. You really should. It's really right up your alley. It's yeah. dark, goths. Uh, probably the second darkest book i've read really and the first yeah the first is being a uh what is it an auto not an autobiography a book about the Iceman killer you, you told me about that yeah that one's like the, pretty dark i saw that at the i saw that at the used bookstore and <laughs> i was like oh yeah he told me about this and i was like but do i want to know about this <laughs> real guy you do man because it's it it's scary but like really good kind of scary like mm. like this guy literally just thought of different ways when he was bored how to torture and 
kill people for the mob. And that's I was terrible. like, that's fascinating. But again, cool. at that time period, if you're on the opposite end of it, you're just like, no, thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, follow us on the Instagram. Like, subscribe, do all that jazz. Comment, share. Comment, and who, share. And who knows, As maybe we, if you uh, write down a book we haven't read, with a little brief synopsis, maybe we'll yeah. read it. And uh, we'll, like I said, we'll be we'll be back with Bojack and or uh, back at comic book stuff with yeah. Bone, or maybe something else entirely. But yeah, I mean, probably, probably back to comic book manga ish things, unless something you know comes up. Yeah, we're kind, we we're kind of do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we just uh, we go with the flow. How he would yeah. call it, inaudible. We. Exactly. Like, who knows? Maybe we'll start with Bojack and say one of us hasn't watched it yet. Probably me, because, you know, I like to uh, wait on my weekends. And we'll just, That's like, true. call an audible and then uh, do something else. Yeah. Like, play magic. That's live. right. We do want to do a live magic show. That'd be fun. All right. Well, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. Laters. <laughs>